Hello and welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I'm your host, Gabe Peterson, and this is the place investors go to gain actionable advice, learn about current market trends, and hear war stories from other professional investors out there in the field today. Before we get started, I have two quick housekeeping items for you. First, if you like this episode, we would very much appreciate a like, subscribe, and share. It is the best way to support the show and keep it running far into the future. Second, if you're a new investor looking to get started in real estate or an experienced investor looking to take your investing to the next level, I've created an ebook just for you that will cover how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance those deals with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. On top of that, I throw in an insane amount of free bonuses that you'll have access to once you buy the ebook. All I charge is our admin costs to keep this show running. So if you're serious about real estate investing and want to create both active and passive income as an investor, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com and click on the button that says, get the ebook in the upper right-hand corner to grab yourself a copy. With that said, let's dive right in. Today, we have a very special guest with us ready to drop some investor knowledge on you. So buckle up, grab your pen and paper and enjoy the ride. All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. Today we have with us Joe Evangelisti. Joe is a coach and investor with a focus on wholesaling and self-storage. Um, he has over 5,000 hours of coaching experience under his belt and uh, with a he pretty much coaches everybody out there, um, but he also develops self-storage, which is I'm super excited about because as everybody knows, I am just getting into self-storage as a niche. So Joe, thank you very much for hopping on here. It is a pleasure to have you. Absolutely, Gabe. Thanks for having me, brother. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, as I was telling you before we got on the show, we are all about stories here. We love to hear how people got from point A to point B. So why don't you take us to the beginning? How'd you get started in real estate in the first place? Yeah, so really real estate for me started as a love for construction, right? I grew up in the construction industry. My dad was a, a, a drywall contractor turned general contractor somewhere in my teens. And so, you know, I've been on I've been on job sites my entire life since I was, you know, five years old walking around job sites and sweeping things and throwing things in the trash and cleaning things up. And, you know, I worked my way through the, the construction industry, um, you know, learning all the tools and techniques my dad could teach me. Uh, through through the years. And uh, inevitably, I ended up in the U.S. Navy Seabees, which is the construction battalions of the Navy. Oh, um, a lot of that's people cool. don't even know they exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't even know they exist, man. They, they you know, they go everywhere by air, they fly everywhere, they build all over, all over the world. And, uh, you know, it was an awesome experience. I got to serve there for six years. So it really started as a basis in construction that flipped me into real estate. That's awesome. So you started, yeah. I mean, it sounds like you, you had a really good mentor. I, you know, we're always talking about mentors here. Um, yep. and your dad, I mean, he, he yep. had construction, you kind of got to watch him growing up. Um, you know, you got the bug. I really, I yep. always say, I wish I had that when I was growing up he hearing people like you, I'm, I'm kind of, in, kind of jealous because you got that, uh, <laughs> you know, firsthand experience there. Yeah, no, um, I, 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 I wouldn't change it. It was awesome. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, you, you grew up through construction, you had that, um, then you got into wholesaling and self-storage after the Seabees. I, I actually did not know that they had, I mean, obviously they have to have a construction arm, the Navy, but didn't know yep. they had a, a cool, catchy, catchy name like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you got into wholesaling and self-storage. How'd you, uh, which one came first and how'd you get into it? Um, it was really a bit of a transition, right? So I initially got into real estate in 2007, which was, I, I call it the luckiest time to get in because I, I got my ass kicked for three and a half years before I started making money. Um, that's a, that's a good way a to start though. <laughs> yeah, no, man. Listen, I, I bought my first three rehabs and, and, you know, I had, like I said, I had the construction background and I had to learn the, you know, the mortgage investing and purchase and sale end of things. So I had to learn a lot of stuff in the first three years. And, um, I went into it by hand, flipping these houses, doing all the work myself, me and my partner. And after about three houses deep, we couldn't resell them. We couldn't, you know, couldn't, um, you know, make a profit. We ended up becoming landlords by default, right? We had to stabilize the property, put a tenant in place. So I, I started learning how to, how to wholesale probably four or five years into my career. After we had done a bunch of flips, I fell into it by accident. Um, in fact, it, it was a, it was a product of being too, uh, having too much uh, in the pipeline, right? I was flipping houses. I was putting short sales under contract and they were getting approved 
And one day I called one of my buddies who was a local builder and I said, um, Hey Mark, would you take this deal off my hands? Like I can't, I don't have enough manpower and private money to buy it. And he was like, cool. How much do you want? And I was like, I, I don't want anything. I just want to put your name on the buyer side so you can take the short sale off my hands. And he was like, bro, that's not how it works. He's like, I'll give you five grand. <laughs> And I was like, you're going to give me five grand for what? And he that was is like, a really you, nice friend right there. Yeah. You acquired the property. This is how it works. Right. So I made my first wholesale fee back in the back in the day. I don't even know, maybe 2011 or 12. Um, just feels like forever ago now. Right. But um, and, uh, you know, and then that's that sparked me into the wholesale business. And, you know, for that, like first 12 years of our career, 10 years of our career, we actually flipped about a thousand houses. I was a single family fix and flip dude in South Jersey. We did a lot of properties, wholesale and rehab. Um, and then about three years ago, we kind of made the transition and said, okay, I want to go something that's more scalable, has more zeros behind it, still easier to control because we're doing one site instead of a hundred houses all over the place. Um, and inevitably we, we rolled into this. Uh, I still have the wholesale company. Uh, we stopped flipping because uh, I, I just didn't, you know, it was just too much. It was too much motion and commotion and drama. Um, but we kept the, the the wholesale company, which is essentially a marketing company, right? As yep. we were finding all of our deals, we just said, okay, we don't need to kill this side. We could just resell these deals to someone else. And then we started, um, you know, scaling up the wholesale company as well. So I put us in wholesale and self-storage at the same time. So, you know, really it's, uh, I run four companies now. I have a media company, a self-storage company, uh, a wholesale company, and a coaching company. Man, that's killer. I love it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And I mean, you, you hear so many times people really, they get into real estate because they watch those, you know, HGTV and all that stuff and they start doing yeah. their flips and then they're like, shit, this is a lot more work than I thought. And especially when you're trying to scale flips, like that is yeah. hard. You have to be just a master in order to get that done. I, uh, yeah. I, I tried to, yeah, Go ahead, I, sorry. I, I tried to do flips myself and I was just, whew, that's hard. That, that is a hard job to do. Yeah, it was like it was like hurting. I used to say called hurting cats, right? Because I had like fifty employees at that time. I had a hundred and some subcontractors. You know, eighty job sites a year going on, settlements, closings, purchases, sales, and it was like it just became so crazy. And then I looked at it and I said, you know what, scalability, right? I can build one self storage and make as much money as we made a hundred flips in one year, right? Yep. So let's let's build ten self storages. Let's do that. Right. Yep. And so, you know, and, and with a way more compact and effective and efficient team of people, I call it putting aces in their places. Right. Having amazing people with a culture where every, the outcome is, is in alignment with what they want. Right. That you know, we want to build. So they're performance based and performance motivated. So, I mean, we're going to we're going to make millionaires inside of our team as well along the way, which is awesome. I couldn't do that with some, with a single family, you know. Yep. 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 Yeah. I mean, that's why I, um, you know, I never try to push people into uh, into commercial at the very beginning, but try to get there as, as fast as you can, because it really is like the work isn't that much more um, in terms of just like the sheer effort that you have to put in the each deal. But it's just yep. it's just so much easier in terms of you only got to do one and uh, and you have the results that you would have had over. Yeah, as you said, like 100 deals. Um, and if you're on the single family side, so yeah. And I've never done construction. I've heard, uh, I've heard, you know, there's a lot more that goes into it, but there's, you know, you also get to reap those rewards. How has um, the self-storage construction side been? Like, I'm sure you've had, you know, construction experience in other areas. Mm -hmm. How is self-storage any different from that? Well, Gabe, I got to tell you this. So about six months ago, I, I remember vividly sitting in my office thinking to myself, damn, you know what? If I became a commercial broker instead of a residential broker, because I was a residential broker for years too. It's like, man, the access to, to, the, to the deal size, the capital, the concept, the building, the construction, man, that would be so much different, you know, mindset wise, because you're right. It's, it's, it, they're just bigger deals. It's very yeah. similar, but they're bigger deals. On the construction side, I actually, I actually appreciate it more because we're talking professionals, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking million dollar contracts or $1.8 million, con like our site clearing for our first sites, $1.6, uh, $1.2 million. So it's like, you know, it, it, you're getting a level of professionalism and a level of professional um, laborers and, and staff that you just don't get when you're dealing with single family and you're really trying to cut to the, the, the lowest price possible to get it done because you have this budget and you can't go over. Um, not that you can't go over in the, in the bigger budgets, but guess what? They're much, much bigger budgets. So there's also good room for negotiation. Everybody can make money. And again, you got a level of professionalism that just doesn't exist in the single family world. 
Yep, absolutely. And that, I mean, there's a lot to be said for that. Just the um, dealing in commercial, it is, it's business um, and mm-hmm. how, not having to deal, especially on the tenant side. I know we're talking about construction here, but um, if you're talking yeah. about just who your, your end buyer is, your tenants, um, yeah. you know, commercial side, especially self-storage, it's, it's more of a, almost like a retail product. And that mm-hmm. kind of um, relationship with your end buyer is, in my opinion, you know, I, I own mobile home parks um, mm-hmm. and it's just, I enjoy that. I, own, I enjoy the business side of things more than I enjoy, you know, having to, you know, the housing side of things. Um, just yeah. because it is, it's a business relationship. It's a lot more, everybody understands it a little bit easier and there's very, very clean lines in it. So, um, you know, I'm a fan of self-storage. It's awesome that you're in it. How many um, projects do you guys got going right now? So we have uh, six projects going. I think we have 14. As of this morning, I was on the call with the construction team, like 14 in the pipeline to purchase over the next 12 months. Um, goal was to do 10 a year. Now we've moved it up to 20 a year because we just expanded our team and our mindset and our people. And um, I, I honestly believe, and it sounds cocky, but I think we have one of the best teams in the entire country for going out and acquiring development deals. Damn, man, that is killer. 20 a year. That is a, that, that is a... It's a good goal. That's a good goal. It's lofty. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it, but I'm going to come as close as I can. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, if you did, if you were doing 80 uh, flips a year, I'm sure, or uh, at a time, I'm sure that's, you know, you got the chops behind you. So that's good. Yep. Um, So, I mean, we've gone through kind of your real estate side. I want to get little, a little into the coaching side of your, of, you know, your life. Um, yeah. you know, every person that I, uh, you know, give advice to, I always say, if you don't have, you know, you can learn a ton from books, you can pick up a book, you can learn as much as you want, but it is so, so much better. And it'll really, uh, um, fast forward your career. If you can learn from somebody who's been there, learn, learn from someone who has the experience. Um, so I always try to put, push people into coaching, into mentorship, because that really is what will accelerate their career. Um, you know, you do coaching. How, how do you see, um, I guess, kind of give us the trajectory of someone coming in, into coaching and how does that kind of transform their, their career um, if they're new to uh, self-storage, new to real estate, any of that stuff? Yeah, really, if I had, if I had to sum it up into one, into one kind of concept, it's what we're doing is collapsing time, right? Like when, when you hire a coach or a mentor, you're not going to not do the work. And you're not going to not get to the end result on your own. It's the question is, how are we going to collapse that time? Right. And so what I realized making the transition, multiple pivots, right. In my life, first I pivoted from doing the actual rehabs to hiring out the rehabs to doing wholesale to hiring a brokerage team. And finally I've boiled it down to in this last four or five years, really surrounding myself with a team of human beings that I love to do business with that literally do it for me. Like, like in other words, I'm leading from the front and I'm pulling, right? But they're pushing me from behind, right? They're actually chasing goals that, that I have and saying, you know, we can do bigger, they're bigger, we can do better, right? And so creating that culture, uh, it really, I, I, I call it the five roads to victory, right? There's really five things that boil down to getting into that culture, creating that atmosphere that you really want to work at and, and surrounding yourself with people you love. Nice. I love it. So can you go, um, you know, just real quick, what are those five kind of pillars roads to victory? Yeah. Yeah. I can drop through them pretty, pretty quick. So number one is, is what I call uh, rewiring your mind, right? Our mindset is what controls everything. And if you're as a leader or visionary, don't have a great mindset, you don't have the right vision. You don't have the right ability to stay impactful, stay positive, keep your message on track. Right. Um, it's the biggest challenge to, to most people is the leader who's in the front right? You have to stay inspired. You have to stay active. And so number one thing you have to do is eliminate the limiting beliefs that keep you from believing that the success that you want is real and it's palatable and you believe it and you can grab it. So when I work with my clients, I, I look at their values. I look at the obstacles in front of them. I look how they, you know, how they hold themselves, you know, what their standards are of play. And we try to rewire what's keeping them from actually achieving that goal. So that's number one is mindset. Nice. I like that. Number one is mindset. And I like that you said standards because um, in, in my life and, you know, people that I've noticed, if you don't put your standards to a certain level, then uh, you're just not going to get the results. Even if you're trying for those results, if you don't expect yourself to perform at whatever level that you would like to perform at, um, then you're generally not going to do it. You have to have that expectation. You have to have those standards or else uh, your, your actions will not follow through. Um, so number one is mindset. What is number two? 
Number two is your strategy or what I call plan of attack. So Gabe, I say this all the time, but most people plan their trip to Mexico, right? And what can they tell you? They can tell you what plane they're on, how they're getting there, the transportation of the hotel, whether they're going to have a poolside or an oceanside view, right? What they're having for dinner, yada, yada, yada. They can tell you everything. But you say to somebody, where do you want to go in life? Right? What do you really want? Right? What do you want to achieve? And most people give you some gray answer or they just have no clue. Right. And so what we have to do is reprogram the strategy to be outcome based because far too many people are task based and they live their life off of a to do list. And what happens is it never gets to done. Right. So they're, they're out there. I always say that these the entrepreneurs that are that are so they're, they claim to be busy all the time putting out fires. Right. They're so excited at the end of the day. I put out so many fires. They're secretly behind the building lighting the fire. Right. The secret <laughs> arsonists. And so they tell themselves they did a good job each day, but did they really move the needle? Did they really do the high gain activities that need to get done to achieve your outcome, not your tasks? And so there's a big differential there that has to be changed in order to program your strategy. I love it. So number two is strategy and it's based on outcomes. That's great. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan of KPI, like really defining Mm -hmm. what is it that you're trying to hit that month or that year or whatever it is. Um, Because as you said, those are the outcomes that you're looking for. Yeah. And, and your outcomes are going to be based, those KPIs are, are, they better be in alignment with an end goal, right? Some, a lot of people just track KPIs for the sake of tracking KPIs. The difference is, are they going to get you closer to that end goal? What is it, right? Then we can make KPIs that make sense. Love it. All right. Mindset strategy. Take us to number three. Number three is check your toolkit, right? So and if I was a CB, I'm deploying overseas. I have to bring the tools that I need to, have to get the job done, right? Especially when I'm deployed to a jungle or a desert there's no Home Depot there, right? So <laughs> I want to make sure that my, my, my clients have the tools that they need to succeed. And a lot of times that's just going through what you have in your atmosphere right now. What are the people you have to leverage? What are the technologies you have to leverage? Are you using the things that are right in front of you, right? So many people have access to amazing CRMs, but they complain that they can't sell or they can't follow up or they can't keep track, right? You have to go in and press the button. And so far too many people use their tools like a new year's resolution, right? They get a new hot tool and they would do it and they do it. And two weeks later, they just stop doing it. And they're like, the tool doesn't work. I need a new shiny object. A lot of times you don't need the shiny object. You need to do the work that's in front of you with the tools that you have available. Because we know that great people are resourceful. They don't need resources, right? The ones that are winning out there every day are using what they have in front of them to, to win, not blaming the resources that they don't really need to get it done to, to begin with. Man, I, I love that message because, you know, I've seen it in my own life. Um, sometimes you really get focused on having the perfect tool, but that's not it. You just need to, you need to use the tools that you're working with um, or that you have in front of you. It's really is, it's, it's, you know, taking the plan, it's taking the action, it's putting your, your feet to the to rubber to the road and getting things done with whatever tool yeah. you have in front of you. So um, love that you said that. And I'm actually going to use this opportunity to plug my favorite CRM. I used to use Podio, nothing, nothing sure. negative against Podio. Podio is great, but we recently switched over to Monday, monday.com. Mm-hmm. That is it's Monday for everything, bro. Oh man. I love Monday. Yeah. It is, it is the coolest CRM. So yeah, anybody that, out there is looking, awesome. yeah, for sure. If anybody's looking I mean, we should talk Podio. offline about some developers. If you have anybody on that side, because I'm always trying to build that Monday out better. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Number four. Number four, um, maybe the most important one next to mindset, and that is what I call controlling the clock, right? How does Tom Brady win and and do it under pressure every single time? How does any major, you know, sports team win the game, become champions? They know exactly how much time they have and they control it. So if Tom's down by 21, the third quarter, he's not sweating it because he knows if I run the ball, I'm going to drain the clock. If I pass the ball, I can maybe get another possession, right? So understanding how to control the clock brings us to what I call the rule of 168. And Gabe, that is simple. It means that every one of us on earth, Elon Musk, Oprah Winfrey, everyone that you emulate that you want to become has 168 hours each week. Okay. And you have to sleep, you have to eat, you have to pay bills, you have to shower, you have to hopefully go to the gym. And what what I, what I want to do is focus on how many hours do we have to create impact, right? Are you being an amazing wife? Are you being an amazing father? Are you being an amazing leader to your team? How much time are you devoting to actually becoming better? because we only have so many hours, each one of us. Love it. Control the clock. That's a good one. I'm writing these down. This is gold here. 
Um, all right, take I, us to number I try five. To, I try, try to bring the heat, man. So number five <laughs> is the trifecta, right? I call it the trifecta because you need all three. So number one is execution or lack thereof, right? How many people are analysis paralysis? They know everything about the thing, but they don't take action. How many people do you talk to, Gabe, all the time? Like, I want to be a real estate investor. I went to this course. I went to that mastermind. I downloaded this thing. I have $50,000 invested in fortune builders. <laughs> I haven't done a deal yet. Yeah, it's man. Right? You know what to do. Just do it. You know the Go step. Go take You've action. Taken... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. You got to execute. But more importantly than execution is, and I feel like this is the reason why you hear that, that most small businesses fail, is people are afraid to course correct, right? If I take action and I hit a freaking roadblock or an obstacle or a speed bump, I'm like, ah, shit, maybe I second guess myself. I don't know if this is the right move. And I have to start rationalizing how, how I, I'm right or wrong. And, and the point is this, I break that word down into two pieces. We're telling ourselves rational lies, right? About why it's a good thing or a bad thing, right? You know how to course correct. You know how to go over obstacles. Trust yourself, trust your gut and take action to go past that obstacle, right? So, so lack of course correction is the second part of the trifecta. And the third and, and most important thing of the trifecta is accountability, right? So many folks lack accountability, Gabe. They lack the, the person who's holding them accountable to becoming the great person that they want to become. And so we, we, we sometimes we find ourselves with accountability partners that are weak, right? Like imagine if your gym buddy was going to meet you at 5 a.m., but in the Northeast, man, it's cold and windy and the, it's, you're under the covers. So you text them and you're like, yo, man, I'm not going to make it this morning. He's like, yeah, good move. I feel sore. I don't want to get out of bed either, right? Hell no, man. Get out of bed. We're doing this. Bullshit, right? But here's the flip <laughs> side, Gabe. If you hired a coach or a training partner for 100 bucks an hour and you texted him at 415, you're like, yo, I'm not making the 5 a.m. What's he going to say? He's going to say, get your fat ass out of bed and show up and do the work because you hired me to hold you accountable. Otherwise, you're going to pay me 100 bucks anyway. I'm just going to sit at the gym, do my own workout, right? Now, all of a sudden, you're going to be like, oh, man, all right, I better put my shoes on and go to work, right? Time to brush my teeth, time to go to the gym. And so accountability partners are a lot of the reason why I see so many people become successful is they're holding themselves accountable to something that's going to create a greater good in their life. Man, I, uh, I love it. And I couldn't say it any, more, any better myself. So um, that is the that is the five roads to victory. I'm going to go through them real quick just so everybody's got a, a overview here. So mindset is number one, and then we go into strategy. Number three is your toolkit. Toolkit. Number four yep. is um, the clock is controlling the clock, and number five is the trifecta, which is composed of execution, course correction, and accountability. That's great, yes, man. Sir. I uh, I love that. That's a, that's a really good. Um, I don't know overview of kind of how to to achieve the success that you're looking for so yeah thank you thank you for sharing that with us absolutely absolutely i'll leave you with one more thing the important part about this is guys i didn't say this at the beginning but this is universal right this works if you're a male or a female it doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is what country you live in every massively successful entrepreneur has these five skills i've, I've learned this from thousands of hours of coaching and masterminding and being in rooms with great people. This, these are the five things that they do to win. Yep. I love it. All right. Well, Hey man, we already blew through our 20 minute mark. So I got to cut <laughs> us off here. <laughs> no worries. I'm going to push us into the quick question round. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so it always starts with books. I'm a big bookie. So why don't you take me to your two favorite books? Um, one for general life wisdom and then one real estate related. Um, okay. Um, I've always loved uh, Dean Graciosi's books. He's got a bunch of them from a real estate related perspective. I just think that his mindset stuff and where he drives, I know he's not even in the real estate game that much even more anymore, but um, I've always, I've always gone towards him. I mean, of course I listen to every, every major real estate coach in the last 20 years. I've gone from Tom Hopkins to Dean to you name it. Um, but I, I've read them all as far as the real estate side goes on the business side. Um, the number one game shifter for me, and remember, I got into business in 2007 when this book came out, but it helped my mindset for creating teams and automations um, was the four hour work week, right? I always wow. go back to that. You know, it's just when I read that the first time, I was like, my life has just shifted. This is where my mindset goes. Um, and, you know, I've had VAs working for me for 15 years now, set 14 years now. Um, I just think that that's one of those game changing uh, books that really created a lot for me. But, you know, it's all time and place, right? You know, we look back on that book now and we laugh at it, but. You know, there was a lot of good nuggets I took out of it. 
<laughs> yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, so many people have recommended that. That's I, I, you know, I'm a huge reader. I love, um, love reading those kind of self-development books. I've yet to pick up four hour work week. It's been on my list. I just haven't done it yet. So I'm going nice. to have to jump on that. I'm going to send you a copy. There you go. All right. Next question. <laughs> and this is uh, for your younger self. So the one go back to the Joe who had no experience in real estate, no experience in business. Um, go up to him, look him in the eye, shake his hand, give him a one piece of advice moving forward. Yeah. So I love this question because I always say that the Joe of like 18 years old, like you couldn't tell that mofo anything, right? Like he just wouldn't listen because he knew everything already. Yeah. Um, but the reality of it is the one shift. And I think that, you know, I've been saying this for you know a couple months now is I would get into bigger deals faster. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I learned this from Grant Cardone said this years ago and whether you like him or hate him, you know, the guy owns a shit ton of a real estate. And he said that his first goal, I believe was 50 units. And it took him like four years to get to 50 units. And then his second goal was a thousand. He says he wishes he started a thousand and then he could have moved it to five. He would have had five times the size of his portfolio today. Um, you know, the fact is we're all human. And just because you're 24 or 26 doesn't mean you can't, or, or 56 doesn't mean you can't create the opportunity in the next four to five years. Uh, there's people doing it all over the country. Yep. Absolutely. Go bigger, faster. I love that one. Yeah. Um, next question is habits. Uh, habits are the foundation of, of our life. So if you could point to yeah. one thing that you do day in, day out, um, that you feel contributes the most to your overall health, well-being, success, what would that be? Mindful, quiet time, right? Mindful journaling, meditation, being inside of my own thoughts, like getting to look at your company from a 30,000 foot view. I feel like there's so many people that don't take five minutes, 10 minutes, let alone 45 minutes a day to think about where they're going and how they're going to get there. It's one of the most impactful things I do in my day. Nice. I like that. And it's really hard to, to put quiet time in your schedule, especially like in real estate, there's always very. something to do. And so it's very, it's a, it's a hard thing to really turn into a habit. Absolutely. All right. Second to last question. Um, this one is real estate related. The United States has, I don't know how many square miles in it, which means there's a lot of opportunity to buy land out there, buy, buy property. Yep. Um, what area of the U.S. are you most excited about investing in today? So um, real quick, when I initially talked to my, one of my, the, my, my chief development officer, he built about 300 self storages, right? I'm trying to go fast. But when I first met him, he said to me, you could throw a dart at a map of the U.S. and be successful. Believe it or not, 98% of new self-storage developments are successful. But that being said, I want to look for growing MSAs. I want to look for where there's a multitude of different uh, large corporations like Atlanta, for example. You have the Cancer Association. You have Coca-Cola. You have Amazon. I think at and is down there. I love growing areas and growing MSAs that, that also have a diverse uh, economic back, you know, structure to them. I love it. Yeah, Georgia, the Southeast has just been blowing up. Um, Crazy. Especially like Florida. Man, it's just, yeah, that, that is where it's yeah. at for sure. Texas, Nashville, or Tennessee. Yeah, Florida, all over the place. There's so many great MSAs coming up. We actually, uh, we just came back from a due diligence trip out in Dallas, and that was the first time I had been there. That, that yeah. city is just just massive. It's just so I, much bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's crazy. I laugh because my, my partner who does our, our scope out for our projects has been to Dallas, I think, four times this month. Oh shit. Nice. He goes there for one day and comes back. I'm like, you're insane. I don't know why you do that, but he does. It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Last question. Um, you've given us a lot of good things to think about here. I'm sure people want to reach out. What is the best way for them to do that? Yeah. The best way to do it is uh, you can go to elevate with Joe.com. It's elevate with Joe.com. We set up a, a link there to, uh, to connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram and all those kind of good places. All right elevate with joe.com i will put that url in the show notes so if you guys see the little more in the description click that bad boy it'll pull down the full description in there you'll be able to find joe's link click through and say hi awesome well joe this has been a pleasure thank you very much for hopping on yeah gabe thanks for having me brother appreciate it absolutely for everybody who's here with us today thank you guys for showing up you are the reason that we do this so we appreciate having you here if you guys have any questions whatsoever, reach out to me, Gabe, at the realestateinvestingclub.com. Other than that, I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic week. Keep rocking real estate, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode as much as I enjoyed putting it on and were able to pull some actionable advice that you can apply in your own investing today in the field. 
Before you go, we have a gift for you. If you're a new investor looking to get started or an established investor looking to invest, take your investing to the next level, I've created an ebook just for you available on our website. This ebook, ebook will cover how I was able to create both active and passive income in real estate with very little money to start with. In it, I will address the three most often cited obstacles new and veteran investors run into by showing you how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance a deal with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. And if you get the ebook today, I am throwing in a bundle of bonuses, seven of them to be exact. The first one will be the off-market lead generation blueprint, which will take you through the exact systems and processes we use to generate off-market leads like like clockwork, which is the most important skill when it comes to creating wealth in real estate. The second bonus is the A to Z REI systems and vendors guide, which will allow you to peek under the hood of our business and see the exact tools, systems, and even the vendors we use to see the success that we do. And the third bonus is the top 100 best performing keywords pack, which is which will give you the exact keywords we use to target motivated sellers online using PPC ads. The fourth bundle is, or the first fourth bonus is our contracts bundle for wholesaling and renting real estate, which will give you access to all the contracts we use in the field to execute all different types of transactions. After that is the investor's quick analysis calculator and offer tool, which will allow you to quickly calculate whether a deal is an actual deal and will allow you to create an offer automatically with, from those calculations. This is a lot of uh, a lot of bonuses that I said. I'm just going to keep going down the list. Number six is the investor's daily success tracker, which is a tracker you can use to ensure you are taking the right actions day in and day out to reach your financial goals in real estate. And the last bonus is the wholesalers template for quick assignment cash, which will give you the templates we use to present our wholesale deals professionally and efficiently to our buyers. Whew, that is a bundle. So it's a mouthful. You get all of those bonuses for free when you download the ebook. All we charge is the admin cost to run the show. So if you're interested in the ebook and the bonus bundle, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com. Click on get the ebook bundle at the top of the page to take advantage of that deal. And with that said, I hope you have a fantastic day and even better week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.